Hi, welcome to this next video on mechanical ventilation. <clears throat> As promised in the last video, um, we're going to do another example of the calculations for total cycle time, inspiratory time, expiratory time, and IE ratio, but we're going to make it slightly more complicated than the last example, and this should give you a, a good idea of how to calculate all these things, or at least understand how these things are calculated in, um, in volume control ventilation with constant flow. So let's get started. Here's, these are our new variables. You'll see that we don't have the ventilator screen here anymore. Um, <clears throat> that shouldn't be a problem. These are the only variables we need to calculate these those things. But if, um, if it helps, you can go back and look at the last video and then just plug in these values rather than the old values. So again, like the last video, I encourage you to uh, sort of pause the video as we get to each question and maybe try and work it all out for yourself and then press play and, and see how you got on. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate our total cycle time. Um, so in order to do that, we need to know our respiratory rate, right? So these are the parameters that we've set for our volume control. They're going to get 450 mils per breath. That's our total volume. Uh, they're going to get that 15 times a minute, 15 breaths per minute. That's our respiratory rate. The, this 450 mils is going to be delivered at a, a flow rate of 45 liters a minute. That's our flow that we set on the ventilator. And we've decided that we're going to use a square flow waveform um, and that's going to give us constant flow. So we're going to get 45 liters a minute of constant flow, and that's how we're going to deliver our 450 mils of tidal volume 15 times a minute. Okay, so let's calculate our total cycle time. So we know that our total cycle time simply depends on our respiratory rate. How much time does each breath cycle have? So we need to take our uh, respiratory rate of 15 breaths per minute 15 breaths per minute and we're going to divide that um uh, sorry we're not going to divide that we're going to we're going to take our 15 breaths a minute and say okay how many how long does each each of those breaths have with a 60 second minute so we take 60 seconds per minute and we divide that by 15 breaths per minute okay so our minutes is going to cancel and we're going to get 60 divided by 15, which is going to give us four and the units will be seconds and that's per breath, right? So per breath cycle, right? So inspiration and expiration is going to take four seconds. So that is our total cycle time, okay? And you should be able to see that as we decrease our respiratory rate, our total cycle time is going to increase. And if we increase our respiratory rate, our total cycle time is going to decrease. In the last example, we used a respiratory rate of 20 breaths a minute, which gave us a total cycle time of three seconds. So when we get to our IE ratio at the end, you, sh you should be able to uh, see how increasing or decreasing your respiratory rate can manipulate your IE ratio. So we have four seconds per breath for our total cycle time. Let's do the next one, which is our inspiratory time. This is usually the one that requires the most sort of math. Um, but it's still not a great deal. So we, we, we wrote out the formula for, in the last video, right? We said that our tidal volume, and we need to convert that into liters, divided by our flow rate, and we need that flow rate in liters per second, will give us our inspiratory time in seconds, right? So we know we have a tidal volume of 450 mils. So what's that in... Um, what is that in liters, right? So we 450 mils is just 0 0.45 liters, right? And now we need to know our flow rate in liters per second. So we have it in liters per minute. So we just have to convert that. So let's do um, over here, maybe we'll do flow. And we have 45 liters per minute, 45 liters per minute. So we're going to divide that by um, 60 seconds per minute, our minutes will cancel and we'll get an answer in liters per second, which is going to be 0 0.75 liters per second. Okay, so that's our flow rate just converted into liters per second. This flow and this flow are the same, they're just in different units. Okay, so now we can plug our values into this formula. We have our um, so this is our 450 mils. These are the same, right? 
Um, so we're going to do, we'll do this down here maybe, we'll do 0 0.45 liters of tidal volume and we're going to use 0 0.75 liters per second of flow. Our liters will cancel and we will get an answer of 0 0.6 seconds. Okay, so that is our inspiratory time in seconds. So we have our total cycle time and our inspiratory time. Let's move on to our expiratory time. I'm going a little quicker in this video because we've already done an example of this. So our expiratory time, now what did we say that is? So our expiratory time is simply the what's left after we've taken out our inspiratory time, right, of our total cycle time. So we know our total cycle time, so it's total cycle time, um, so equals our inspiratory time plus our expiratory time, right? So if we want to calculate our expiratory time, we just take our total cycle time and we subtract our inspiratory time. We can do that quite simply. So let's take 4.0 seconds and minus 0 0.6 seconds. And that's going to give us our um, expiratory time of three, oh, that's not very good, three, 3.4 seconds, right? Because it's simply what's remaining after our, our inspiration. So inspiration is going to take 0 0.6 seconds. We have four seconds for the entire breath cycle, inspiration and expiration. So what's left is 3.4 seconds. Okay, so we're almost there. Next thing we're going to do is finally calculate our I to E ratio. Okay, I E ratio. So I E ratio is simply a ratio of our inspiratory time to our expiratory time, right? Now we know both of these, so we can do we can calculate this. So we have an inspiratory time of 0 0.6 seconds to an expiratory time of 3.4 seconds. So if you get your calculator out, I'd be impressed if you do this in your head. Um, get our calculator out, we can figure out that for every one part of inspiration, we have 5 point, it's 666, so we'll get 5.7 parts expiration. So our ID ratio is 5.7. I did this one to show you that your ID ratio isn't always a whole number. It isn't always 1 to 5, 1 to 4, 1 to 3. It can be down to 5.7, 5.6. But the inspiration part will always be one, right? That's going to be a whole number because it's a ratio. Every one part of inspiration, we're having 5.7 parts of expiration. Okay, so that is our IE ratio. So you should be able to start to see as we do these videos. that As you manipulate some of these variables, you, you can manipulate this IE ratio, which becomes important when you start trying to ventilate people. Um, let's say you're trying to ventilate a, an asthmatic and you want them to have a very high IU, you, you want it to have a ratio like this, you want it to have a nice big expiratory time, right? So you need to be able to manipulate your IU ratio because we're not controlling it directly, at least not in volume control ventilation. Um, so we need to be able to know which of these values is going to manipulate our IU ratio, okay? So think about this for an example. Let's say you have 450 mils of gas to put into the patient. This is your tidal volume, and we're gonna keep the same respiratory rate. Just think of this as, in principle, what would make the IE ratio more like this? What would give you a ratio of one to five? What would make this ratio higher? Let's say one to 5.7. Instead of 5.7, what would make this higher than 5.7? One to six, one to seven. How do we make the expiration longer as in proportion to inspiration? So we could do that by speeding up the flow, right? If we made this flow faster, we could put the gas in quicker, which would mean inspiration would take sh a, a shorter period of time, which would give you more time for expiration. So by knowing how to manipulate these variables, we can manipulate our IE ratio, which is how this becomes clinically applicable when we're trying to ventilate different disease types. So, so that's the second example. We're gonna move on to something different in the next video.